All right, guys, welcome back to Ether Bandit's Garage. Today, we're gonna be talking about this uh, poor old John Deere 60 sitting out in my pasture. Uh, so I've been wanting to, I've been trying to struggle with making YouTube videos for you guys, just cause like, stuff I've been doing the last little bit here has been primarily just like really small piddly stuff that takes forever to do. And, uh, and I want to start with a fresh project for y'all so y'all can see the whole start to finish. And I, I got a couple other tractors we could play with, but I think I want to play with this one. This is my uh, John Deere 60. I bought it very locally. Like, that was probably the main reason I purchased it. I have too many tractors as it is. But I purchased it locally, and I, uh, I think I want to try to get it running again. Well, especially after a recent development. So I bought it, and uh, whenever I was winching it on the trailer, back tires would not turn. I'm like, man, because I just I figured the engine was going to be stuck, but I didn't think the transmission was going to be stuck. I mean, but I, I paid. I could have hauled it to the scrapyard and made money, but the whole reason I bought it was to keep it out of the scrapyard. <laughs> so it sat for a while over in my dead row, or... It just sat in the middle because I didn't have somebody to help me drag it into my dead row. And uh, finally, my dad helped me move a couple tractors around. And he wanted to move this one too. And so he moved it way away because my dead row is over there. But long story short, whenever he was dragging it over here, I was steering it back tires still weren't turning in the past i had tried to move i was loading some other stuff and i had a tractor out with a loader and i started pushing on it and i noticed that the brakes that the the whole brake drums like the whole housing would tweak a little bit and i was like i wonder if those brakes aren't froze up sure enough while he was dragging i started beating on these with a hammer and now you can see they're no longer stuck, thus meaning the tires turn. So that left me thinking, you know, well, I mean, I would like to get this big old tractor going because I have John Deere B's in that 830, but this would be like a medium sized two cylinder. Those B's are just baby tractors. I mean, you can tell it is very original. It, it still even has the oil pressure shut off sediment bowl. That means that whenever the you cut the tractor off oil pressure drops automatically cuts your fuel off they're good on theory but they not functional which I, I will be deleting that but i thought it was interesting that that was on there and then uh also a while back i had my boris i had stole my buddy's boroscope for something and so i scoped down these cylinders and it really only looks like one piston is stuck which i mean it's a it's a two cylinder <laughs> so you can only have a max of two stuck but um if i do if we i don't want to pull the head off because i'm trying to make this be like a uh we do the bare bones to get this tractor running like right now i have it soaking i have poured some atf in the cylinders which i know i should have videoed it just don't have enough hands here is the uh the serial number which this is in fact a uh john deere 60 i don't remember what year it is i can look it up um uh but i put atf in the cylinders and uh, and then i came over which i was a couple days ago and then today, I came over here and I popped the uh, flywheel cover off, like so. And uh, I set about seeing if I could just manually break it loose with the pipe wrench. Because, you know, I have like a 36-inch pipe wrench. And with these two cylinders, usually if you can get... If it's just one piston, I've broke them loose before really easily. Like, I have a, a 36B up front. It was stuck... And I was going to pull the block out. And I unhooked one piston and went to turn the fl the flywheel. And it immediately turned. So I hooked the other piston up. And I broke that one loose too. And like it was it was easy. 
but I don't want to really. We might um uh, end up unhooking the pistons because you can easily you can do that by taking this cover off. But these are a little bit more of a pain than that 36 because the sheet metal on the 36 ends right here, so you have plenty of room there. <laughs> this tractor, I think I have a little trick I want to try, and we are going to see if it might work. But I'm gonna, I gotta make it first and I'll try to keep you, show you all along the way. It, uh, will be too. Essentially, it's gonna be. I'm gonna break all the porcelain off a spark plug, weld that hole shut, drill it, and tap it to put a grease jerk there. And then I have a cordless grease gun to sit here, put 10,000 psi on that piston. And see if we can't break it loose like that. And if we can break it loose like that, you know, we might have to pull the valve cover off, free a stuck valve, unstick the clutch, and I bet this tractor would run. Because I do think the clutch is stuck. But other than that, like, it, tractor's relatively straight. I mean, the sheet metal is not, not perfect, but it would be a good tractor to have run the farm. Give me something to play with. I mean, it, it's definitely seen its better days, but it sure would be fun to play with. Alrighty, well, I will get back to y'all whenever I'm making that, uh, breaking all the porcelain out of a spark plug. I'll be right back. Alrighty, guys, so we're back. I have here our spark plug and our grease jerk. So, I have in our handy dandy little grease jerk thingy, it says tap sizes, quarter 28, eighth 27, which I wonder if that's a misprint and it's actually eighth 28, because I have eighth 28 pipe tap, but I have a quarter 28 tap, so we're just going to do these because that's what we got, and uh, first step is going to be to break all the porcelain out of the spark plug with a hammer which I have, and then, trusty old Milwaukee, and then we're gonna take this little trusty old Aesop, fill the hole in, drill it out, tap it, and uh, we can go get the grease gun, and see what happens. Let me set the camera up, we'll be right back. So you, uh, you most definitely wanna wear safety glasses for this. Because this porcelain is so hard, you also want to be careful. Um, uh, don't do this, or don't don't throw porcelain at car windows, because it will break. It's, I don't understand. I guess because it's so hard, you can throw that at a window, and it will break the window, unlike the car. Let me work on this a little bit more. I'll be right back. So, uh, in case anybody was wondering, porcelain. It's incredibly hard to get out of a spark plug. I think we're about to take uh, more advanced maneuvers here. <laughs> we'll be right back. Okay, so I moved all over here to the vise, where I think I'm going to attempt to take my uh, die grinder with carbide tip here and uh, mill this little thing off so I can just try to press punch that porcelain out because it's not really cooperating. definitely does not like the tungsten or the porcelain excuse me let me um uh... so here's what we did 
Let me just melt her down a little bit more. Hopefully I can take a punch and punch that out. I'm gonna do a little bit more. We'll be back. We definitely got her moving there. Just a little bit more, I guess. There she goes. Huh, I never have seen the inside of a spark plug before. Interesting. Okay, well we're gonna weld that up, see what happens. I think that we are just going to um, uh, grind her off a little bit flatter first. Alrighty guys, so we uh, got the old Esau fired up. Yes, I know it looks pretty much maxed out on um, uh, an eighth inch. We are using 220, but the, our main stipulation right now is this is um, uh, 0.023 wire. I have 035, I don't really feel like getting it out and swapping it over. Um, yes, I think that is a copper crush washer in there. Really not worried about it because I intend to fill this all the way up to the top. So I'm really not worried about sealing. But if it becomes an issue, well, get another spark plug. Oh well. Let's uh, get to welding. Got her good and hot there. Um, I do believe that'll that'll send. Cause we just need just enough of the threads to uh, to thread into. Okay, so the proper drill bit size for a quarter 28, 732. So we got one here, and we're just gonna go ahead and it's uh not exactly centered, but gets the job done. Let me get my tap. So we are actually gonna lubricate this. I know you don't have to, but a little bit of three in one will never hurt nobody. Just as a Harbor Freight tap anyway, so. 
and you want to go, I think the theory is you go half a turn, back a quarter, half a turn, back a quarter. You do that to break the chips. Now for the million dollar question, we'll just throw it in there. Money. Okay. So we're gonna put that in the tractor. See what happens, we'll be right back. All right guys, so uh, here's the current setup we got. Three strikes in there. That is zip tied on, cut it off with the battery. Here is our stockpile of very cheap grease. I pulled the valve cover off to uh, make sure that these valves were shut. And I uh, think we're on our fifth tube of grease right now. So, I will update y'all whenever something interesting happens. But, the crank still has slop in it, so at least we know it's not bound up on the other piston yet. So, we'll get back to y'all in a little bit. Y'all notice it is turning right now. You can see the pry bar going down. That is awesome. See, now we can grab another one. So that is awesome. It is turning. You could tell. I know y'all could see it. Especially in the extended part on the pry bar. Yeah, it Thing turns just not not very good quite yet and he still needs the uh, little bit of pressure so there is no telling how long this thing's actually been turning before I caught it because I pulled the spark plug out and oil came out and it was not full whenever I started. So, uh, it's good progress. We'll keep going with her. Alrighty, guys. So, we have officially burned through 11 tubes of grease. And, uh, I just want to go ahead and say, couldn't be happier with the results from today. I do not have it turning freely yet. But whenever it started, this, it, it's almost made it all the way back. I, I, the piston is very far back. And it turns. So I think what I'm going to do now is in another video, we're going to take that. This video might be long enough. What we're going to do now is we're going to pull that out. Try to spin it the other direction. And if worse comes to worse, we'll get some more grease and put it on that side <laughs> and see what happens. But I mean, I just, I can't believe like this, this valve was stuck and it popped earlier and all the rest of this, like it's all, all in relatively great shape. Like this carburetor, I had to pull the bowl off. Carb is mint. So, we'll uh, keep working on this and get back to y'all. I think this is where I'm gonna close the video. Y'all don't have too much fun.